The NBA just announced LeBron James robbed of the MVP. I'm just kidding, they announced Giannis Antetokounmpo won back to back. I'm very happy for him, but it's just wrong. LeBron James should have won his fifth MVP and actually it's not close. In this video, I'll explain how this even happened and why LeBron should have won instead. Hey, it's Casey, welcome to AM Hoops. Hit subscribe and notification bells because we're coming out with five videos per week, always dropping at five Eastern. Yes, I know the Celtics are down 2-0. Today we're talking about MVP, but obviously I made a prediction about the Celtics beating the Heat. If you want my full thoughts on this, I put out a new AM Hoops podcast where I talk about how, yes, it probably wasn't the best prediction, but why the Celtics are down 2-0. Uh, listen to that wherever you get podcasts, always on Friday morning, a new episode. And if you want to give me crap actually during the games, you can leave it in the comments or I'm always on Twitter, at Casey Kiernan. So Giannis won back-to-back -back league MVPs. It is the 14th time that's happened in history, but just the third time a player has won most valuable and defensive player of the year in the same season. The point is, he's amazing. No one's arguing that. Anytime you make a video like this, LeBron should have been MVP, people act like you're saying Giannis sucks. And that's not what I'm saying. But LeBron was more valuable, and there's an obvious reason he wasn't chosen. The argument they make for Giannis winning MVP is this. Giannis put up about 30 points per game, 14 boards, and six assists in just 30 minutes a game. Back in 2010, when LeBron was 25 years old, he put up 35, five, and six, playing over 40 minutes a game. Same story with Michael Jordan at 25 years old. We have never seen a stat monster like Giannis in 2020. Combine that with great defense and the fact that his team had the best record and the media says he is the obvious MVP. The media's argument for Giannis is this. His stats are unbelievable, like historic. We've never seen it, but that's the problem. Basketball shouldn't be all about stats. It's not played on paper. The media votes for this stuff, but the media has become more and more obsessed with stats the last 20 years. I don't think that's a bad thing, by the way. I think sports should be smart. I don't think it should be a bunch of jocks and meatheads. I like that NBA front offices have nerds like Daryl Morey in Houston or the Warriors front office. It means that the sport evolves, but you need a mix and it's leaned way too heavily on one side. ESPN started hiring stat-obsessed experts that see everything through analytics. Those are the people who vote for MVP. Players have learned too, hey, if I wanna win MVP, I have to put up ridiculous numbers in the regular season that they can't argue with. I have to be insane on paper. The media members will vote me MVP. They are so obsessed with stats, it's created guys like Russell Westbrook, who force a triple-double every night, not to win games necessarily, but to win himself an MVP, and it worked. Every single MVP from 1956 to 1992 also won a championship in their career. Then something changed the last 25 plus years. We are seeing more MVPs who will never be champions. I'm not saying Giannis will never be a champion, but I think MVP should stand for something more than just stats. All NBA should be about stats. We argue over MVP though, because there's no exact definition. It's most valuable. What does that mean? It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. The fact that so many media members told us, uh, Giannis is the clear MVP, there's no argument. If you think otherwise, you're stupid, shows how much their argument leaned on stats, which is wrong. LeBron James is the actual most valuable player for 2020. His argument? Well, let's start with stats. Why not? Because that's where Giannis' argument is. He played five more minutes per game than Giannis because, oh, I don't know, his team needed him more, you know, more valuable. People will say that LeBron has Anthony Davis, so of course his team has a great record. Uh, actually, even with AD, the Lakers struggled when LeBron was resting. LA was average without LeBron at plus 0.1 points per 100 possessions. The Bucks were a good offense without Giannis at plus 4.6. 
With LeBron, the Lakers jumped to about a plus 11 per 100. The Bucks were even better at plus 16, but it's clear by those numbers, LeBron was more valuable to the Lakers. Then you have the fact that LeBron James played point guard for the first time in his career. And I know that storyline has been beaten to death, so I won't spend too long on it here, but I wanna mention this one stat. LeBron was the best passer in the NBA. LeBron had 26.5 assist points created per game. Giannis was 15.4. But again, stats aren't the most important thing. But while Giannis dominates most stats, LeBron wins impact stats the stats that impact value. Then there's everything beyond stats that clearly show LeBron James should have been MVP. And I'm not saying stats don't matter. They should actually be most of the argument, but not the entire argument. People called LeBron the washed king. He was 35 years old in his 17th season, coming off the first bad injury of his career. There were superstars around the league coming up, others teaming up like Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. LeBron was no longer the best player in the league. Then the washed king dominated the West. A much tougher conference than the East on a nightly basis. All these people saying Giannis was the best player on the best team. Forget the Lakers were just four games back with a tougher schedule. LeBron took a 37 win team to the number one seed. Yes, there were different players than last year, but why did Anthony Davis even demand a trade there? Why did Danny Green or Dwight Howard choose the Lakers when they had options? LeBron James. The Lakers were mostly a new roster with a new coach, but they played like old teammates because of LeBron. The Bucks and Lakers split 1-1 in the regular season. Before the season was suspended, the Lakers beat the Clippers and Bucks back to back. LeBron rose to the occasion in both because Giannis did the I wear the crown now gesture after dropping 50 against the Lakers in the first meeting. Both guys had MVP moments this season. This is not a bash Giannis point, but LeBron stepped up in the spotlight. There's also the fact that the team leaned on LeBron during the biggest tragedy in recent NBA history, directly affecting their team. He was the biggest voice behind the scenes, and he stepped up in public too. Now, I'm not saying that off-court stuff like that should be taken into account, but it is impressive that the team could have fallen apart emotionally. They did lose that first game back after Kobe's death to Portland, but then they won nine of their next 10 games with LeBron as their leader. Look, really, the most valuable player to his team in 2020 was LeBron James to the Lakers. I even said this before in a previous awards video that LeBron should have been MVP. People laughed. Obviously, the playoffs aren't a part of this, but I really hope that the Bucks losing in five are gonna help some people to consider LeBron's case. I'm not saying Giannis didn't have a great year. He did, but we have to get away from being so stats obsessed in the NBA and specifically with MVP. We have to have a balance of both. The perfect balance was LeBron James in 2020. He was robbed of his fifth MVP. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.